Hi, everybody. Welcome to our master class. This is Onyx Backcountry 101 Master the App. Um, and I am stoked to be talking today with Kobe about um, how to use the app in trail. Um, sweet. I'm Matt Madick. I am a vertical marketing manager on the Backcountry team. I live in uh, Carbondale, Colorado, and I love hiking, snowboarding, splitboarding, mountain biking, all the things. Um, and just love to get to talk about how to plan adventures and, and get out there. Um, in these master classes. And I'm Kobe. I'm based in Bozeman, Montana here. Um, I use Onyx Backcountry a ton, even before I started working here. Um, in the winter, I backcountry ski a lot. Um, summertime, trail run, mountain bike, do a little bit of climb, scrambling type stuff. Um, and it's awesome, awesome to have you all here. I'm excited to share a little adventure I got on with uh, a coworker at Onyx a couple of weeks back um, and sort of in the process talk through um, how, how I use our app for planning, um, and then also discuss sort of how um, to actually take things into the field. And uh, hopefully you guys can learn a couple uh, tips from us. Sweet. All right, so what's on our docket for today? Um, first introductions, which we're currently doing. Um, then we're gonna go over a handful of new features um, with Onyx Backcountry and some of the things we've recently released to make sure you guys are up to speed on the changes. Um, then Kobe's going to dive into a Onyx Backcountry demo. Um, I'm going to take it back and we're going to talk about how to take your plan in the field and to ensure that your phone is ready to guide you while you're out there. Um, and then we are going to do a giveaway and a Q&A at the end. Sweet. And yeah, so if you have not yet downloaded Onyx Backcountry, now is a really good opportunity. This QR code will give you a 30% discount on Onyx Backcountry Premium or Elite. And um, there's also a 14-day Onyx Backcountry Elite trial on there, too, if you just want to check it out. Um, I find it really useful to get into the app and to kind of follow along with us as we do this. And we're also going to be sharing out some share links as well to kind of like put the content that we're building in this class in your hands um, so you can play with it on your own. Um, cool. So a little bit of history about Onyx. Um, if you're new to our platform, um, Onyx Backcountry didn't just appear overnight. Um, it kind of spawned off of the Onyx Hunt app, which was launched in 2009. Um, Onyx Hunt started as a, um, a GPS chip that would go into Garmin devices. Um, and as smartphones became more powerful, we created a standalone GPS mapping app. And once we built these incredible maps, we said, well, who else could benefit from these? And that's where Onyx Off-Road and Onyx Backcountry came from. Um, so Onyx Backcountry is devoted to your human-powered activities, um, making your hikes, your backpacking trips, your um, peak bagging, your backcountry skiing, your snowshoeing, your cross-country skiing, your mountain biking, um, way more easy to plan, um, easy to visualize, and easier to um, orchestrate. So um, that is the pitch. And yeah, Onyx Backcountry, like some of the things we offer, um, one is a multi-season trail and snow mode, which reshifts re the map based on what season it is and what activities we'll be doing. We have a ton of trails in the app, um, a ton of guidebooks and adventures. Um, here, go back one, Kobe, sorry. Um, yeah, and then we also feature things like uh, color-coded public land ownership, so you can see whether or not you're on public land or private land um, and what type of land that is, whether it be um, Bureau of Land Management land, um, national forest, uh, national parks, uh, et cetera. Um, we also have a ton of waypoints, markup tools, and other things that you can customize your maps with. Um, and then for the winter, we have slope angle and slope aspect layers, snow conditions, avalanche forecasts, um, GPS tracking that will follow you while, while you're in the field, and advanced route building tools. Sweet. Um, so what's new at Onyx Backcountry? Um, our developers have been very hard at work this summer, um, and there's a lot of new stuff and a lot of new stuff coming. Um, so the first... Major update, um, oh, I didn't update the thing here, but we have a new um, mobile layers UI that you may have noticed. So I'll be showing that in the portion where I'm using my cell phone to show you what's new. Um, and we'll kind of go over like how to access all the layers and how to find where the things you used to you know use are now located. Um, we also have um, improved iOS on 3D, like this shot right here was taken from my phone. And just shows how awesome that 3D experience can be when you're trying to visualize your uh, next hike or backcountry ski trip. Um, we have a recent imagery layer that has come out for Elite. So you can see recent imagery from the past two weeks um, and see whether or not the area you want to go to is snowy. Um, I'm curious if we'll see if the leaves have changed with this new imagery layer. 
Um, so you can see leaf peeping, um, et cetera. So it's really cool to just get like a snapshot in the sky from a two week window. Um, we also have route builder, which we're going to be using super heavily during this class to link together trails on trail and off trail and build a custom route. And then we also have trip reports, which now lets you know the current status of your trails. You can submit feedback whether you've when you've hiked and let people know if there's uh, you know closures or any other issues with the trail. And then you also can read those reports from other users to know um, if there's any issues with the trail you're looking at. Sweet. Cool. And without further ado, um, Kobe's going to take the reins and show us a little bit about Onyx Backcountry. Yeah, for sure. Uh, thanks for the intro, Matt, and the overview. Um, so uh, today I'm going to talk through a bit of a multi-activity uh, adventure that I had about a month ago. Um, me and a buddy who's actually the backcountry product manager here at Onyx, Charlie, um, went out for a little run, hike, scramble combo day. Um, ended up taking us like all day, it was, I think 10 hours out, uh, 20 miles or so, a bunch of vert, a bunch of new terrain. Um, and super, like, especially with the off trail travel, um, was a really great opportunity to use Onyx backcountry. Um, I do a lot of that in the summer and the winter. So, um, while like a lot of the stuff I'll be talking about is maybe in some ways, like kind of intense in terms of the level of like scrambling and some of the risk, risk making, risk taking decisions and all of that, like some of, some of that you guys might all be like, oh, I totally do all that and more. And other of you, other ones on the call maybe are, uh, not interested in doing that at all. Um, but I think that this is still a really valuable example of a trip. Um, just because of the level of planning for um, these longer off trail travel days um, really showcases some of like the key uh, features in our app. Um, so uh, bear with me, even though some of the stuff maybe um, may not be like entirely relevant to what you're doing um, in a, in a, on a day to day basis. Um, so without further ado, I'll hop over to um, our web map. Um, which some of you guys maybe doesn't don't even know exists. Um, our our platform is like a mobile app is what we are primarily known for, but we also have an awesome uh, kind of companion web app uh, for that. Um, and I think we're dropping the link in the chat so you guys can check that out if you haven't seen it. Um, I normally, bar barring a few like small features that you would not really notice or be aware of if you weren't an employee, um, the web map experience and the uh, phone experience on your mobile app um, are very similar. Uh, the same features are generally available in both places. Um, so it begs the question, why do I do planning on the web map? Um, one, I just love being able to have a big screen, a big computer to look at stuff on. Um, I also oftentimes, as you'll see for an adventure like this, like certain trips, <laughs> I feel like take not a ton of planning um, and I can just go into the Onyx backcountry app, uh, toggle a trail, see a little info and go for it. Um, for something like this, I'll do a bit more research. Um, and like as an Onyx employee, I honestly use our app for a ton of stuff. And there's also a lot of information that's available other places online um, that I think is totally valuable and good to use as well. Um, so that's sort of why I'm starting in the web map. Uh, and then I'll kind of get everything set up for the whole plan for the day in the web map. Um, I'll also do most of my, so I'll do all my route planning there, kind of scouting before I get there, any notes I can take um, and have all that uh, done on the web. Um, and then I'll usually switch over to, well, I always switch over to mobile um, on my phone the day of. Um, so I'll make sure to save my maps before I go into the field. Um, but it's awesome because all the route info that I'll be um, that I'll be preparing here um, will also just show up right in my mobile app. Um, so pretty handy, slick interface. Um, so I guess first, just to kick off, uh, the area that I went down to was about two hours from Bozeman here um, in the Taylor Hillgard region. Uh, it's an area that I actually have known about for a while, but never been to. I've been really curious to check it out on skis in the winter. Um, conditions have never really lined up for me to do that. Um, and so a buddy texted me and was like, hey, you wanna check this out this weekend? And I was stoked to actually get a chance to go there because it's a bit of a commitment, new terrain, long day. Um, so that's sort of how I found out about the area. Um, I think also like 
valuable things to mention in terms of planning done outside of the app, like in terms of getting the idea and then also um, like getting any other beta from people locally is like, we have a ton of info in the app. There's a ton of info or some info other places online that is helpful to pull in. Um, but it's also like pretty handy to um, connect with other people that you might know that have like actually been to an area like this that's um, somewhat remote and has a lot of um, sort of navigational challenges. Um, so I definitely urge like, you know, getting all the info that you can uh, beforehand. Um, so I'll give you some examples of how I do that. Um, I'll usually start with like a Google search and oftentimes for this off trail stuff, uh, summit post is a great resource. Um, there's, there was a post on summit post for this route or much of the route that we wanted to do. So I pulled in a lot of that. Um, sometimes you'll also see other like random blogs and stuff that can be, um, helpful. Um, the one thing that I would note, uh, and this is sort of skipping forward a bit, but, um, Going back to our slides, the one thing I would note about like different information sources is for any of this off trail stuff that may require like some level of scrambling, climbing, uh, that type of stuff. Uh, I think it's important to know like what the actual rating system that people are discussing is. Um, so th the most important ones that I sort of focus on in um in terms of the rating system is class three is considered scrambling with increased exposure, handholds necessary, a rope could be carried, falls could be fatal. Um, another way that some people will describe that is like terrain that you need one hand on the ground, but not two. Um, and then class four, simple climbing, possibly exposure, often using a rope, um, falls may well be fatal. Um, and so that uh, is sort of the upper end of where that where I will personally go on a day like this is class four um above class four kind of becomes um for me feels too risky uh to do without a rope often um but that's like a totally a personal decision i know people that are would do class five stuff um unroped walking and i know people that would never go off a trail and that's totally fine it, different people have different risk tolerances um but i say all that particularly for the planning phase, it's really important to uh, have those in the back of your head and then also know that um, there's not really a source of truth on these things. And um, I've definitely ended up on plenty of trails or routes or whatever, where, you know, the person that went on it was like, oh, quick and easy scramble. And you get there and you're like, oh, this looks like, you know, a serious multi-pitch rock climb. Like I've, I'm not willing to do that. Um, so that's an important thing is just knowing that there's a variety of sources online most posts for especially areas like this that are kind of remote don't have a ton of info so you're relying on one person um so just like take that with a grain of salt um so anyways i will i'll just google um the area um and you can see we got a good blog here we got summit post um this is what we um what we relied on for some of our info for the day. Um, I'll spare you guys all the details of um, reading through all this right now, um, but I'll usually take a full read through any info there is online, um, get a rough sense of the route, and then I'll hop over to web map, um, which I'll do now. Um, so this is our web map interface. Um, you can see I'm in the Onyx office here in Bozeman. That's my little blue dot. Um, kind of handy if you get lost on here that you can just press this and it will recenter you to your location. Um, so I know, um, well, I know where the area is myself and I could drag myself down there. Um, but a feature that a lot of people don't know we have in Onyx is an awesome search tool. Um, it's actually quite good. Um, so I'm just gonna type in, I know the first peak on this is Hillgard Peak. You can see I searched it before, but I'll do it again. Um, and I know it's the one near Big Sky here. Um, so I'm just going to click and it's going to fly me down there. Cool. Um, and I know that's going to be the start of this loop, um, or the first peak rather. Um, and then I'm just going to toggle over here. So this is a, another handy tool over here is our, um, uh, base map selector. Um, I think the hybrid base map is awesome. That's what I have on right now shows satellite images and topo lines combined, which gives a really immersive experience. Um, but sometimes 
topo is just simpler to see this. Um, so the route we wanted to do was basically there's a trail in over here on the south side of these mountains, and there's a trail out on the north side. Um, both are fairly heavily trafficked. Um, the area in between these peaks, Hillgard Peak definitely sees some traffic. The other two less so, um, but we knew that we wanted to do a loop connecting the full route. Um, options were either to do it clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, we ended up deciding on going uh, counterclockwise and hitting Hillgard Peak first um, because that's the highest peak of all three of them. Um, and you can see that because um, we have little, we have the, the elevation right there um, under each of these peaks. So anyways, it's kind of the, the coolest of the three. So we were like, if we hit that one first and ends up taking us longer, um, at least we'll have a successful day and we can just backtrack from there. Um, so that's sort of where I start. Um, know that the trailhead is over here. Um, so that's sort of where I would start um, building a route. Um, and I can show you like how I would roughly go about this. So this is our route builder tool. Um, it, we have snap to functionality, which is pretty handy uh, anytime you're online and then offline it's usable, but um, it doesn't have the same like magnetic power. Um, so I know we're gonna start here and then I literally just drag and it follows the trail um, and gets you really quick vert and distance stats. Um, another way to, there are other ways to go about this. Um, some folks that are like slightly more old school, I think, really like this uh, down this corner, the bottom right corner, you can also see like a legend that changes size when you zoom. Um, that's kind of a good way to get a rough sense of scale, but I love using the root builder, it's super fast. Uh, so what I do at first is to take a real rough cut of the area. Um, so snap two through here, and then I'm just gonna do, so when you go off trail, um, you kind of have to switch to point draw um, and, and make your own path. Um, so I'm just gonna click a really rough route just to get a sense and give you guys a sense of the shape of what we're trying to do here. And I'll probably just delete this later, um, but it's just kind of an initial. And then when I get back to the trail, I switch back to snap to. Um, so this is, this is my first step. Um, gives us a really rough sense of the loop, um, rough sense of the elevation profile, doing it that direction. So 18 miles, just under 7,000 feet. Um, and that's what I'll kind of use as the as the base of my planning. Um, I'll probably throw this away, but like I can just uh, show you guys how to name it. I'll say, um, and then I'm going to, uh, I don't want it to show up too much. I'm gonna turn it white change the color there, and then I'm just gonna change the style so it's dotted. Um, so anyways, that's my initial cut. And then I know, um, I know when I'm like, I know the next part I need to figure out is how I'm gonna get from where I get off trail back to the trail over here. Um, and here's where actually line distance tool is kind of handy. This is just a quick way to measure distances. Um, but we can just go and you're like, okay, from trail to trail, it's around four and a half miles that I need to figure out how we're going to navigate. I know our goal is to hit these three peaks for the day. That's described in Summit Post, the rough plan there. Um, and I'm going to save you. I'll show you guys some of how I pull in like info from another site. But uh, since I know it, I'll just start showing you how I'd roughly break down this terrain. Um, First step is gonna be, I'm gonna go in hybrid mode here because um, that's really helpful to see. Um, and then I'm gonna get into, so this is where the trail ends. We get to this lake. Um, I'll actually drop, that's a, that's around uh, like four something, four to six miles in. Uh, I forget what it was exactly, um, but I love to carry a little portable water filter with me so I don't have to carry as much water. And I'm just gonna, so I can see it visually mark um that this is a water source here um so when i'm there i can see that remember that there's a that there's a lake right to my left 
um, and get some water before I go up high because then you kind of get away from the water. Um, and now here's where I think 3D really comes in handy. Um, you can toggle 3D down in the right over here uh, on the selector. Well, actually I'm already toggled in 3D, but I'll show you how to do it again. So that's just clicking this slider here. The other way to do this, and I always use this shortcut, I like using keyboard shortcuts, is just if you're on a Mac, and I think it's the same on a PC, um, if not, we can share, uh, but just control and then pull your mouse up and you can get a better and better tilt. I oftentimes like to use a really low tilt and you can see that like we get some kind of cool, some cool views um, from that. Uh, the other thing to mention uh, around like the zoom feature, I'm kind of zipping around quickly here. Um, you'll see there's like the actual zoom buttons over here and those totally work, but I use the kind of the two finger gesture, um, the, the scrolling motion in and out on my trackpad or mouse um, to get that experience. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna try to map out just a few key points that I need to hit on the route. Um, so I'll basically hit all the key peaks and saddles that I know I need to go through. And then I'm gonna go back um, and with the route builder tool again, take a second pass and actually build a route that uh, closely maps those key points. That's basically because like what I'm doing is switching between like a large granularity approach of just making, being like, oh, I have this 20 mile loop and being like, okay, here's on a, you know, quarter mile by quarter mile basis on the technical terrain. Here's exactly where I plan on going. Um, so first step is I know we need to get from here to Hilgard Peak. Um, this is a pretty easy one to see on the topos. Um, I can just see right here that there is a natural saddle um, on the topo lines. Um, you can also see that uh, if you're less comfortable with topos in 3D, that's obviously the lowest saddle. We can see on the back side, you can see you can get in close and see that it it looks like it goes through. You never totally know. Um, the beta says it goes through. So we're going to trust that. Um, and I'm just going to drop an initial just like just a line for me to see when I'm building this route later. And I'm not gonna bother naming it or coloring it or anything because I'm just gonna throw it away or, or leave it later. Then I'm gonna keep making my way. I know we have to go across this big flat. That should be easy enough to figure out. And then I know we, based on the description, we're gonna uh, go to this lower saddle here and then try to get to the summit. So I'll just put a rough, a rough point here. And some of this stuff, like, I think it's helpful to have a route beforehand and have that saved. I think it's really helpful actually. Um, but a lot of this stuff you like, you just can't necessarily know until you're out there. Um, so I like to just build a route that gets me as close to where I think I need to be. Um, and then obviously like, <laughs> especially, I mean, when you're following any trail or any route on like any app, it's best judgment to like keep your head up, um, and actually make sure you're comfortable covering that terrain. Um, but especially when you're just like making your own route willy nilly, um, like I am here, it's like, you know, very well, like if I were to follow this exact red line, that's actually by a cliff or something right there. Like you got to be heads up in the moment. So I know I need to get up Hillguard Peak there, have that roughly mapped. And then I know I need to get from there over to Dutchman, which is right there. So you can kind of see, um, and this is a good example uh, where kind of reading and then knowing, like reading all the beta and then knowing um, what stuff looks like in 3D versus in real life is really important here because um, it sort of looks from this angle at a kind of a high zoom. It looks like I would just follow this ridge right along over to Dutchman and it looks nice and easy. Um, but I know from what I read online that that actually isn't the case and like it's full on kind of gnarly rock climbing. Um, 
And I also know that because um, having gotten burned a handful of times myself, like making a route and being like, oh, I'm just going to spend like two minutes making a quick line over this. Um, I've learned that for this technical stuff, like you really want to look in close at the 3D and you can't always see, but you can definitely tell like, you know, these topos get pretty steep up here. Um, and the rock looks like, you know, that looks like a sheer rock face. Um, so you can start to learn how to identify those things. The other tip that I would um, have for this type of terrain is like, a lot of times the topos don't mean that much um, unless you're like really uh, handy with them. Um, so sometimes as a gut check, I'll use, I'll actually switch over to our uh, snow mode um, and toggle on, uh, I'll toggle on our, um, and you can see, uh, plug for our winter stuff. We have pretty sweet winter snow imagery. Um, if you guys ski, that's pretty handy in the winter. Um, but uh, I'll just toss on slope angle. Um, and that's like a good gut check for me. Um, and the more you play with it, the more you can kind of know what what goes, what doesn't. Um, but what I see here with this now color-coded um, map is that we have like all this purple stuff is like, you know, 45 to 45 plus degrees as i can see from this um this little legend up here um so i know that that's going to be pretty steep and kind of like likely rock climbing more challenging terrain than i want um what i would say to look for when you're looking for terrain that's like ridges that actually you actually can cover the ground um is and i, I spent some time looking at this for actually this route um, but I look for like these little narrow bands of yellow and orange right along the ridge. So this is a great example right here in front of me um, of like pretty steep to get up there, um, but it was actually manageable in person. And all of this then when you're on the ridge is like nice, mellow enough walking. Um, but if you were to follow, say, I, if I had to guess, you could get all the way to here and then you'd be like, oh, it kicks up and I need uh more climbing skill than I have. Um, or for some of you, maybe it's like, I have plenty of climbing skill and I have a rope and I'm gonna go up it. Um, so that's kind of another tip there. The other piece, um, and I know we're spending a good bit of time on the first part of this route and we'll breeze through a little bit later, um, but switching back to trail mode, um, I know from the description, toggling back over here, um, Let's see if I can quickly find where is. So here's actually a picture on the ground in that area, looking towards the, this is the summit of Hillgard up here. And this is um, kind of a snow-filled couloir coming off of it. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, so this person, when they did it a couple of years back, they said in late July, um, found that notch entirely filled with snow. They had an ax, um, didn't have crampons and felt it was sleep, steep enough to glissade. Um, so they went for it and it was all good. Um, so that was one piece that we knew going in was going to be a potential, like if that was still totally snow filled and um, like likely kind of still icy and not great quality snow, like that's the potential of having like, I mean, we can see here that Kular is um i mean i guess it's only 400 feet for the bulk of it um but if it's super icy and steep like that like 400 feet doesn't sound like that much until you're sliding on your butt down it towards a rock field so we actually spent a lot of time looking before we went um and then also making a plan when we were up here um and here's a little a little plug for new onyx feature that I've been loving and I think it's gonna be huge like going into the fall here, not mentioned at the top, but uh, elite users, um, members have access to recent imagery, both on the web map and on your mobile device. Uh, the web map right now is, a, I think is a little bit easier to use and easier to toggle back, um, but great functionality on our app as well. And you just switch that on. It's lower resolution, um, 
than our normal imagery, as you can see. Uh, but it's like actually the highest resolution, I think, available for this recent imagery, um, better than any of our competitors. Um, so uh, it's a little hit or miss depending on different areas. Here you can see like the area that I, in question is kind of shaded here. Um, so it's not necessarily perfect in this image, um, but it'll give us a sense. And when you know what to look for too, I mean, we're just looking for snow. Um, like I know that I'm looking for this little, this little shoot. I'm wondering if that is gonna let us go through or if we're gonna need a different, uh, a different route there. Um, so we actually did this like, I think it was over a month ago. So this imagery is taken on two week uh, periods. So I'm just gonna scroll back through to roughly when that was, it was, probably, it was actually probably, it was probably around this image here. So you can see it's melted a little more in the latest image. It's receded up that bowl there. Um, but at the time it had a fair bit of snow all the way down there. Um, and it's kind of fun. You can go back, back and see when it was really snowy. Um, so anyways, I really, I think this is a super cool feature. Um, if you hike or trail run stuff, I think this fall will be pretty handy to see like what areas you can still go to. Um, or if you're like really fired up on getting skiing as early or as late as you can in the year, um, it'll be super handy for that as well. Yeah, this um, is so anyways, my favorite we'd... feature by far, just being able to like find late season ski turns or to just make sure you're not going to have a time post holding up to your waist on a hike. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so then I'm going to keep, keep just moving us along here. Uh, I'm going to breeze through some of the like back and forth of me reading the summit post description and making notes here. Um, but I'll like loosely look for, use these tools draw a rough line up to where I think I'm gonna go um, and save that for later. Um, and then uh, here's another tip uh, that I like to use for a day like this. Um, so you guys saw that I dropped a waypoint on, um, on that first water source. Sometimes it's helpful to actually, like I actually know that we're gonna want water somewhere in here too. So you can do that again. Um, I could go all the way through here. Um, we actually stopped at this little thing. Um, so I'll just drop another, another water source. Um, and you can see that uh, it kind of just plopped down on the map because of the way that I set it up, but you can just drag it to where you want. Um, you can also change the colors of these or leave a note. Um, so I'll be like, this is our second spot that we expect to get water. Um, and I'll just leave a note to myself that it might not actually have water. Like to me, looking at this online, it did, but like it's a tiny little pond. So, um, and then the other point that I wanted to pull out on um, where waypoints is actually are actually super helpful for a route like this um is like you can do as much route planning and i try to do as much as i can for a route like this before i go out um but any of that info that you have or like thoughts on route finding when you're out there um you're gonna want to drop in um some way that you can find it out there a lot of times up high at least around this part of montana i find i have like once you get up above a certain elevation you actually have really good cell service and can like go look at what you were looking at before um, as in like, look at what you were looking at on the web before that. Um, but a lot of times you can't rely on that. So, uh, I'm just going to find, I'm going to find the section about Dutchman. Um, this was sort of a navigationally tough part. So it says approaching the summit of Dutchman, it got more challenging. They passed below the summit on the West side and, uh, wound up at a notch above an east facing gully above the summit block. Um, anyways, I would like, before I go out, I would, can read this stuff over and over again and I'll just forget it immediately. Like I'll know that that's gonna be the crucial uh, like component that I need to remember um, and I'll forget it. So two things that I'll do, I'll do one of the two or both. Um, 
I'll, if I'm on my phone, I'll just like screenshot key parts of the description just to make sure I have it. Um, whether it's on summit post or a blog or whatever, um, or I will just, and I found this is actually a little bit better because then I'm not scrolling back through all my pictures to try to find the right screenshot. Like I know when I get to Dutchman, when I get right here, I'm going to have to have a decision point and uh, decide that. So I'll just like toss a little barrier icon as a reminder. Uh, and I'll label that. And I'm just going to copy in this little note section, um, copy that little snippet of, of info. Um, so when I get there, I won't have to go find that again in my screenshots. Um, and here again is a point where I would um, call out, actually, if anyone's planning on doing this, um, and this is a good, a good example of why, like, you should read as much as you can, but also not entirely trust it, is the person that described this said they went to the west over this and you can see we have a compass a little over here that tells you which direction you're facing so he said that he went to the west around the summit here it looks kind of fine from this from the top but actually the whole west side and i might have a picture of this later the whole west side is just like a sheer like 800 foot cliff so we spent a bunch of time walking over here and we were like, there's no way that we're going down that. <laughs> um, and then backtracked and went around the right, dropped down and we we're like, oh yeah, that is a, an easy little walking path around this side. So we'll just zip through there, kind of as a reminder. Um, then from there on, I'll know we'll just follow the ridge to Echo Peak, which is the last peak there. And from what I've read, this part's like fairly straightforward following the ridge. I'm not gonna map it super specifically. Um, and then I'm gonna kind of do this again over here. I know coming off Echo Peak, uh, we're gonna have to just make our way back to this trail. Um, and one point that I'll make about this type of terrain, I think I have this later in the notes, but like, um off trail travel is like definitely damaging to the environment in certain ways that is uh like not necessarily leave no trace um so finding ways to minimize your impact up there um is always a good thing here in montana it's not as much of a um a consideration um it's like an area like this doesn't see a huge amount of traffic which is like maybe me making just excuses to myself that it's okay um but uh doesn't see a huge amount of traffic, but more importantly, um, as you can see, like this is all just like rock. Um, like you're not really disturbing vegetation or anything when you're up high here. It's just piles and piles of rock. So it's not as much of a consideration for this whole ridgeline. That's actually all good. Down here, you start to get to like some tree bin areas um, that are like, would you would be leaving more of an impact. Um, so I think just being mindful of like following following existing trails if there are trails or finding like lower impact ways. Um, that's my general rule of thumb around here. I know different parts of the country see different levels of traffic. And also I know there are a lot of places that have like super fragile alpine vegetation that requires a much more cautious approach than like uh, the rocks around here. But um, that's just a general rule of thumb. So anyways, that's kind of a rough route map that I think gives me enough info for now. Um, Oh, I forgot to put in. I, so we know this is snowy. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to show you this other, or I'm just going to, I'm not going to show you how I found it, but basically used all those tools, 3D and stuff to find another couloir over here that was shorter and didn't have snow in it. Um, and then I'm going to go and actually, um, I'm actually going to make my route. Um, so this is kind of going to be, um, a more finalized version of this, depending on how much of a perfectionist type person you are. Um, all of this info that we have is actually, for me, a lot of days would be enough. Um, I have a rough route. I have a, um, I have a few key points mapped out. I have some info on the map. Um, but for a day like today, uh, it's a longer day. I also am going with, like in this case, I was going with a friend and wanted to just have it simple to have have us both on the same page and like a lot of this stuff if 
I didn't talk you through, it would be kind of cryptic. Like you'd be like, what's this yellow? What's this red line? What's this white line? So we're just going to clean it up um, and use the root builder tool, which is up here on the right again. Um, it's also available in the bottom bar on uh, your mobile device. Uh, it's the tools uh, icon, which is second from the right, I believe. Um, just click in there and there'll be a root builder. Um, so anyways, we're going to build another root here. Um, I'm just going to, I know I'm starting at that trailhead. Zipping all the way in. Um, so boom, first lake, 5.6 miles, 2,000 feet. Um, and I'll be like remembering the stuff along the way or go back and check it. Cause like a lot of this is helpful when I'm trying to figure out how long it's going to take and what time I should start and weather windows and stuff is like, Oh, okay. I know that six miles, 2000 feet. Like I should be able to do that in, let's say an hour and a half. Um, and I, I know that from my experience for other people, that's going to be faster or slower, but it's helpful to keep a, keep a, keep an eye on that for your just planning in the future. Uh, and anyways, I'm going to just kind of make the more granular route all the way through across this whole field. And Kobe, not to interrupt, but if you just saw what he just did there, he switched from snap to two point draw when he moved to the off trail experience. And that's how you like demagnetize um, your route from existing trail networks and, and break free. Sorry. <laughs> totally. Um, and then yeah just get kind of granular with it around here basically somewhat of a game of connect the dots um and some people i think i'm probably more granular than a lot of people i go out with in terms of how i look at maps beforehand uh partially because i work at a company that like makes maps um and i like doing it um so for some people this would be like way more detailed than they need other people, it might be, um, it might not be like enough if you feel like you need more guidance out there. Like you can see, I'm kind of zipping across certain sections that I know from being out there actually weren't that easy. So it depends just how much you want to like uh, have your decision making happen before or how much you want to kind of figure out when you're out there. Um, regardless, you're going to have to figure out some stuff when you're out there. So. It's nice to figure out some of it before, I think. Um, and I don't know if you guys are catching this, but on the, you can see on the root builder over here, like as I'm going, this is actually, an, this is an awesome tool because you can see like live distance vert um, gain and loss. Um, and you can also just toggle back through that as you're going. Um, you can also like while I'm building this, you can see this is a pretty robust like use of this. I'm probably dropped. 80 points so far um but it's, you kind of need that to be granular the other piece that you can do while you're doing or i believe let's see i thought you could do this while you're doing it it might be an after the fact thing i'll show you in the editor is um you can adjust well i can show you one one thing here uh you can undo and go back like let's say oh i actually wanted to go to this lake um or you can also hit this edit button which i actually don't use much. I think that gets what I want. Yep. Um, and you can drag points around um, and remake your route. Um, so let's just, let's keep going here. Okay. Sorry to bore you guys with all the clicking through all that. But when it snapped to, you can see it's like, boom like five seconds and mm, um, I think this is because I hit the editor. Ah, there we go. I just wasn't clicking. Um, cool. So let's say that's our route. Um, and I'm just going to name it. That looks like a truly epic, long adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the other tip that I would have on this is uh, a lot of times, even though it seemed like I went really granular, a lot of times they'll end up being a little bit longer <laughs> and a little bit more vert because 
you make mistakes when you're out there, all of that. So yeah, there's my there's my route. I'll show you a couple, um, unless you have anything to chime in here, Matt, I'll show you guys a couple, um, like how I would share this with a friend when I'm here. Um, and also just how, how to share that as like a link, how to share it as a folder, how to share it as a GPX. Um, so if your friend uses Onyx, um, you can just use the share button, copy the link, and then uh, and then just send it out. So I'll send you guys that, just so you can see what I've done there. Um, the other, um, another option, uh, like let's say I want my friend to get that route and all these little waypoints that I added, because those are gonna be handy for them as well. I'm gonna go over to my content in the left, um, and this will work on same flow on your app as well as on the computer. So you go to my content and then um, I'm gonna say, add folder. Um, we're gonna say, name it. Um, and then I often will add this, um, add this stuff during, like while I'm making the, the content, I can add it to the folder. Um, but after the fact, you can also just add it. Um, so I'm gonna click these things that I named. So I know that those three waypoints and they, it's a little hard to see probably on the screen share, but if you hone in on this, on this first waypoint, you can see that it's selected when I select it, it has a little bit of a white um, thing around it. Um, and then I'm going to find my route. Um, yeah, and I'll share. It's not that much, only four items, but I'll uh, save that to the folder. Um, yeah, looks like my folder has all this. Uh, can put any other notes, like uh, just like when I planned it. Um, sometimes it's helpful to look back at. And then I can uh, share. I'll send that link to you guys as well. Um, and uh, what else? Yeah, I can show you guys how to how to export this to the GPX. I know some folks on this call, probably some friends of mine. Um, use um, like smartwatches or uh, sport watches when they're out there um, and they want to be able to uh, they want to be able to share all um, share like a GPX to that. Um, so I'm going to go to my content and I'm going to find that route. It's that first route there um, and then three dots and then I go down and click export and I can export as a GPX or a KML. And then I'm going to save that. Um, I'll go through that again. I think that's probably a little fast. Um, <laughs> so starting here, you can either click, you can either find that content by clicking on it, or when you label your stuff well, you just go to my content. I know it was a root because I used root builder to make it. And then I see it's the first one. Um, and then I click these three dots and export. Um, you can also add it to a folder from there. You can edit it. So if you realize you messed something up, um, you can delete it. So like for the sake of a clean map, after the fact, I'll probably like this rough cut I did, I'll probably click on that and I'll probably delete it. Um, and then the other piece I'll show you just in the case that I were to have, um, like if let's say a buddy of mine did this earlier in the summer and they had a GPX file that I could use, um, I would, be able to import that to Onyx. Um, and again, all this all of this stuff, like if you save an offline map for this area, you'll have all of this stuff when you're out there. Um, the GPX file, the route, the waypoints, all that info will be accessible um, and it's seamless. So that's pretty awesome. Um, but to import something, I already actually, I, I recorded a track of this uh, on my phone and then I'll show you just how to import it. So you go to my content, import, um, and then I'm going to, where is it? There we go. There's the recording. And there we go. Um, I can, I can edit this, uh, to make it a, a different color if I want different line type. Um, so yeah, that's how you go about importing a, a GPX. Uh, 
And you can see this is always sometimes kind of fun. It's like, okay, where we built the map together is actually pretty close to the actual GPX. And sorry for the ugly colors. The yellow and green doesn't go well together. Um, so yeah, that's kind of all the prep I do before. Then I'd send out that folder. And let's say my buddy Matt is um, is going to come on that with me. Uh, I think he's going to take a moment here and show how he would go about showing or go about preparing his phone um, for a trip like this, just so he's ready, um, which mostly means downloading a map. Sweet. Give me one second here. Kobe, thanks so much for showing us. Um... You know how you approach building this line. Um, hold on, I'm trying to get it on my phone so I can show the phone part. Um, and what I love the most about Onyx Backcountry is just showing, you know, how you can do these experiences that are that are a little off the beaten path, right? Like Kobe just went here. He took two existing trail networks. He combined them into an epic traverse. And now we have uh, my an estimated mileage. We have um, distance. We have elevation. We have all these things. And, um, you know, so if he taps me on the shoulder when I'm in the office and says, Hey, you want to go for a little hike? I can look at it and say, are you, what do you mean little hike? Um, <laughs> so it's really great to just like build these maps, make a dream plan, um, and get on the same page with your crew to make sure that, um, you guys are both up for the challenge that you have communicated, um, effectively with the planning process and, um, that you, um, you know, are just totally in sync with what you are going to put yourself through. Um, and one other thing too, that I really applaud you for with this one, Kobe is just, um, you know, utilizing multiple resources, whether that be a friend who's done it, um, a GPX file that your friend shared, um, a, a summit post article, in my opinion, there's, you can never have a, like, you can never have too much information when you're about to go on something this intense. Um, and it never hurts to ask around. And the beauty of Onyx backcountry is that you can take information from all these different sources and combine them into one place that you can trust to take you into the field. So Kobe, I am going to take over the screen share. Yeah, I can see if my phone will work. So I need from to stop here, to do that. Um, yeah, I think you need to stop. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to do this. We're going to do iPhone via cable. Cool. So Kobe, uh, can you see my screen? Yep. Sweet. Screen. Cool. So Kobe taps me on the shoulder and says, "I got this crazy idea. Do you want to go do this hike for me this weekend?" So I can say, "All right. Well, what do you got?" Um, this is the link that he shared with us. I think this is the folder. Oh, it is the folder. Great. So this is what it will look like on your phone. If he were to text you this file and say, Hey, like this, I got this crazy idea. Like, what do you think? So we add this folder to our library. Um, and then this is going to let you know that it's view only. This is Kobe's file. Um, so it makes it a little bit more easy to navigate with, because if I start going willy nilly, moving his waypoints, moving his wrap builder, um, and fat fingering my phone, it could end up messing up the plan. <laughs> Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons we have it as view only. So if you click on it, it'll pull in all of the information and there's a couple different options here. Like this comes back to our like obsession with data management is like that the waypoints get really confusing folders, make it really easy to toggle with. So you can do one of two things up top. Um, you can either hide your folder on your map or you can show only this folder. Um, so usually when I get a new folder, I like to do show only this folder on the map and that way it hides any other pins or distractions I may have um, and brings that content all front and center. Um, so sweet. Now that we're here, um, I'm just going to click on one of these waypoints and it's going to fly me over to the route. So I'm using two fingers to pinch and zoom as I get into the route over here. And um, there is the route. It's that green dash. That's the cleaned up one that he made. And if I click on it here, we can see all the things we planned, right? There's our elevation profile. Um, there's our distance, our elevation gain, our elevation loss. Um, it shows Kobe being the one who shared it with for me. Um, and then everything too, like those waypoint notes also transition over. So if he added photos to the waypoints, if he added descriptions, all that stuff will be shared with you as you um, start reading through the, the thing here. Um, and then once again, too, on the mobile thing, I really like doing this as well, is where you take this, um, elevation profile. And if you drag with your finger, you can trace the route. Um, and it will follow along and say, all right, this is five miles in, you know, this is the high point of the route at 7.4 miles in, um, and then kind of just get a better perspective on how far everything is from one another, how distant everything is and, and kind of just really what the plan is for the day. Um, and then as on the mobile experience or on the desktop experience, we have 3d as well. So, um, 
over here, you'll see this big button that says 3D. When you toggle that, it'll shift the map. Um, and then if you use two fingers and push up, that'll give you your pitch. So you can rotate in and do a lot of the stuff like we were doing on the desktop with that 3D experience and get a better lay of the land here. Um, so one thing I did want to point out too was the um, redesign of where our layers are stored. Um, this is fairly new for us, so I wanted to be sure to address it here. Um, the layers can now be found here. Um, and the benefit of adding them here is that as we add more layers, um, you can toggle on layers, whether or not they're snow features or trail features. So within here, um, this is where you can select your base maps, like Kobe was showing earlier. If you actually pop this up, it makes it a little bit more digestible to figure out what these layers actually do. Um, there's a map legend up here if you click it. And that'll pull up a bunch of the information about what the different colors mean, what these elevation profiles mean, what those different recreation site icons mean. Um, so this is a good place to help orient yourself with like what the different content types are and what they could mean. Um, and then you can toggle between your topo, hybrid satellite. Um, in here as well, you get your preferred base map imagery. So if you like that snowy image, you can turn that on. Um, and then that's where you can also find recent imagery if you're an elite member and you want to see that snow or lack of snow on the trail. Um, and then as you go through here, we have a handful of layers that are trail layers, as well as the all layers section, which includes the snow layers in this one. So um, we have trail layers like trail slope, um, active wildfires, government land, um, private land, historic wildfires, air quality index, and wildfire smoke. So this is your central resource to toggle those on and off. Um, so I can show you in here as well, like the trail slope one will show you like elevation changes around the route. Um, and if you click in here too, you can get a description on what this feature is and what it does and how to interpret it. So this is a really good resource to learn more about the app um, and puts more of these features at your fingertips with the education surrounding them. Um, I'll just turn a handful of these layers. All right, and then we're back in. So, you know, continuing to orient yourself with the route, continuing to navigate around um, and and there it is. So um, before you head out into the field, um, you need to make sure that you download a map for offline use. Um, this is really important to remember before you head out and before, you know, as you're packing up all your gear, that you need to make sure that you're doing this one extra step so that this can follow you as you're traveling through here. So um, in the bottom over here in your menu, you have your offline maps um, button right there. When you click that, it'll open up a couple options. So um, here's all the maps that I have saved, um, but I'm going to start a new one. So, oh, good pop-up and good reminder. Um, 3D avail is currently unavailable offline um, because of just the size of those files that would require to have that kind of 3D experience offline. So for now, um, offline is in 2D. So when you're out of service too, um, just that kind of also plans, like shows the importance of planning and preparing in advance is just knowing that like, if you have that line, you can trust that you've mapped in 3D. Um, you don't need to rely on 3D out in the field. So once you're in here, you have your ability to select your resolution of your map. So there's low, medium, and high. I think for the size of this one um, and just the scale of it, I'm going to go with a medium resolution. Um, high, I would like to use sometimes if I'm like backcountry skiing and I want really crisp satellite imagery, et cetera. Um, and low would be, um, you know, if I'm really just trying to get the lay of the land and to see trail networks, but want to have that expanded to a very broad area. So looking at medium, um, you know, you want to make sure that see this little square box right here, that it's covering every place you're going to be while you're out of service. And you can expand it here and get a broader map and encompass a larger area. And you can see those mileages changing, um, or you can get a smaller one. And the main thing here is that um, the download size is actually really the reason that, um, that you want to consider this usually would show me an estimated download size. Right now it is not, um, but I have plenty of storage on my phone. I got 23 gigs between all of my dog photos. So I got plenty to store here. I'm gonna title it um, Montana. And then I'm gonna put a note with Kobe. <laughs> and this makes it easier um, just as you're looking through all of your um, looking through all of your existing um, offline maps and just making sure like when it comes time to start clearing, clearing up things on your phone, that you're not deleting the ones that you use regularly um, and you 
kind of prioritize the ones that are not in your backyard to delete. Um, and then we hit save. So when we hit save, it's thinking about it. Oh, we got an unexpected error. <laughs> Let me try this one more time. I think your internet on your phone might be funky if the download size and um yeah i think uh let's just if that's try. not loading new map internet's been weird today this is our size we'll just save it there we go Beautiful. yeah and you can see that time it showed you your uh, how big the file is going to be oh yeah i don't know so sweet there it is it's downloaded on our phone i'm obsessed with doing this next step just to make sure that everything's on my phone so up here you'll see this button that says go offline on a mission like this, if the phone isn't working, um, you know, it's it's going to be it's it's going to put us in a difficult situation where we probably have to turn around. Um, oh, hold on, something got weird when I closed it out. <laughs> All right, show this folder on map. There we go. Cool. So here's the route. So I'm obsessed with doing this next step, which is um, the if you look up here, this tells you the map is currently offline. So it's not drawing from any cell service or Wi-Fi right now, and you can just see like how detailed the map is. Um, even when I'm offline um, and it is not currently using service. So I always like to double check this to make sure it downloaded properly, that everything is good to go, um, that I can trust it to navigate me while I'm in the field. Um, so I'll show you a couple other features that I like using while I'm in the field. Um, if you look down here in the bottom right corner, there are these crosshairs. If you click it once, it'll shoot to your exact location. Um, here I am in Colorado. I'm still offline, so that's why it's blurry. Let's turn that back on. Sweet. And then um, when you click it twice, this crosshairs button, it'll show you your car, your orientation. So like as I'm moving around and looking like, am I on the right trail? Am I facing in the right direction? This will actually show you kind of like what direction you're facing. So I love using that in the field as well. And then the other thing I like to use is the tracker tool, which can be found right here. So what this does is you turn this on, it'll give you your time, your distance, um, and it'll also just leave a little breadcrumb trail around which, as you're going. So tick that thing on and it'll like draw a little line behind you so you know where you've been. Um, so yeah. And then once you're done with that too, and you've created a line that tracks behind you, that will live in your map as a track. So different than the route that Kobe built in Route Builder, the track would be like an example of something that um, was you physically moving through the wilderness. Um, and showing that behavior. Um, and then I think that's all I really wanted to go over for just like taking someone else's plans um, and moving into it. But if there's questions on the uh, mobile experience, um, we can jump back into it during the Q&A. So yeah. And from a safety perspective, I, I would add to the sharing your route, either as a GPX or as an on Onyx file um, is super handy. Um, people, Even people that are not paying Onyx members will be able to see uh, those routes and view what you send them. Um, so let's say you have a loved one that uh, they don't necessarily do all this stuff um, and they don't want to pay for an app. Um, they can still see where you are, which can oftentimes be really helpful um, in any sort of like a overdue arrival search type situation to know more than just, oh, he was going to, you know, somewhere near Big Sky, like to know the, the actual route plan. Um, Safety wise, also the tracker is huge. Um, like if you actually need to um, backtrack or see where you've been, um, super handy as well. Um, yeah, I always, I'm always sending like my mom, <laughs> my tracks when I'm doing something or my my route, my route plan when I'm um, going out and doing something difficult and just having, you know, people out of service who can be your lifeline. Um, but one thing to consider too, is that like, there's no way within our app when you're out of cell service to have like a real time feed of where you are on your route, um, because that's just not possible with the way phones work right now um, out of service. So just take that into consideration too. Like it's it's better to give give your route plan, um, but people won't be able to like physically see where you're at on the trail. Totally. Yeah, and there, there are a lot of great options on the market for like GPS communication devices um, that do that. So um, worth considering if you get out there and do this stuff a lot. Um, cool, I'll just touch on two or three other brief things um, that I would do. Like let's say me and Matt have talked about this and we want to do it this weekend. Um, this specific weekend, actually, I know is going to be um, pretty bad weather down there, but um, we'll be able to see that at least. Um, so a few things that I would check in on is like, if we can find any info on any of these trails, 
or that area like related to closures. Um, and this is a cool uh, feature that we added um, in Onyx uh, just recently, um, but trail reports. Um, and I can actually see a trip report here um, from somebody that went, this is actually from Charlie. Um, he went and put this in afterwards, but you can actually see this entrance trail that we planned on. We planned this whole route, did all this work and oh, it's actually closed. Let's see what that's about. Um, down tree, wash out, close, dry. So we get some info there. Looks like based on this, it should still be closed. Um, so that's just a consideration. Like I would do some other research online. We did some other research. We couldn't really find much about it online. We got there. Um, turns out it was just the trail had been a little bit washed out through one section and uh, it was technically closed, I think, primarily for horse travel. Um, so it'd be pretty hard to get through that stuff, but on foot, it was not an issue. Uh, the other piece that I would look at like day of is trying to figure out like how long this is going to take you, when you should start any sort of weather considerations. So like trying to estimate this terrain. I mean, you can do a rough estimate based on your elevation gain, distance, all that. Um, you could like, so uh, there's a lot of like what you know personally, like I'll know that this first part will be kind of quick. We'll be able to jog and hike some of it. And then this stuff up high looks like it's going to be really slow. Um, so I'd be like, you know, I'd roughly be like, okay, you know, looking at the, looking at our route, let's say like, and you can zip through it. Like Matt was showing online, let's say two hours to there, another two hours to Hillguard peak. That's like four. And then this ridge is only a couple miles, but I know it's all off trail. So let's say that's another, let's say we're moving that one mile an hour through there. So that's four, five, six, seven hours basically um, of ridge time, which rough math. Um, I'm also going to like then rethink, okay, water plan. We're going to be like above, above tree line, above lakes, above most streams for, you know, potentially four hours there. How much water should I bring? Um, all that. Uh, so anyways, and then I'd continue about here. Let's say that's another uh, two or three hours. So that puts us at like 10 or 11 hours for the day. Um, rough estimate. Uh, the other piece that I do always important is checking the weather. Um, I know that like in general, a lot of these high mountains out West get thunderstorms in the afternoon. Um, so we might want to just work back and say, okay, we want to be off the last peak by 2 PM. Um, work back time for when we need to start, when we need to leave town. Um, and then other piece is actually pulling in more like direct weather which we have on both on mobile uh, and on um, web, we have actually pretty sweet functionality um, and gives you weather like es like estimates for a specific point. Um, I believe it's based on the uh, weather underground model. We probably have it somewhere on our website, but it's actually pretty good data. Um, and we also have sunrise sunset in there. So I, I'll know like, Okay, for this, if we're trying to get off the high peaks by two, we're actually going to be starting before sunrise. So I'm going to need to bring a headlamp. Um, and then we also see the weather, like hourly forecast upcoming, um, precip. And in general, it looks like a not a good weekend for it. Um, the other resource that I would point to here is like, so that's, this is a great weather view. For some of this, like more serious high mountain stuff, you like want to kind of get pretty nerdy with the weather. And there's this cool website that I like to use called spot.wx. Um, and basically it like does the same thing as, as Onyx in terms of getting you like a, a weather forecast for that location. Um, but you actually get a ton of different weather models from different like weather modeling agencies. So um, sometimes it's good and like you can kind of compare the different weather models and see, we have a pretty granular view on Onyx and, and usually for simple stuff, um, I'll just use that. But if I'm like really looking to get hour by hour, um, sometimes like lightning flash rate, stuff like that, like this is another great website um, as well. Uh, so that's kind of it in terms of tools within Onyx. Um, in terms of, we hit on most of these sort of like um, safety and ethic tips for this type of travel. Um, one thing I would add is just like knowing your own confidence levels, 
not moving up something that you're not going to be comfortable coming back down um because that's how you get into a sticky situation um and uh also just being really mindful of rock fall and other groups that might be out there in the summer um a lot of times if i know it's going to be kind of a loose rock situation i'll bring a helmet um and then the other piece that i would just tie in as like really important for a bigger trip like this but really any trip uh if you are like pretty into mapping and you want to keep honing in your skills and have better and better trips and more accurate planning before is having some form of retrospective afterwards. Um, this sounds really formal. I don't do this really that formally. It's more just like stuff that I naturally think about. Um, but like one, just within the party, um, just thinking like how it went, uh, how did you compare to your time estimate? Where were you slower, faster? Um, were you comfortable? Did you have enough stuff? Uh, do you make smart decisions? Do you feel like you were lucky with what you did or were you smart and actually um, well-planned? Uh, how was the terrain? Did it meet expectations? All of that. Um, and all of that, like I think over time, leads you to have a much more accurate sense of how challenging terrain will be, what, uh, like how long stuff will take you, how much food you need, what clothes you need for certain days, and just become like a little bit more adept at doing things outdoors. Um, for like a mapping specific component of this is really thinking specifically about the terrain, how you looked at it before, and then comparing how it felt out there afterwards. And this is something that I've gotten a lot better at. Um, and I kind of alluded to it a bit during the conversation, but like a lot of times stuff doesn't look like as simple as it looks on the map. Um, and so there, there are a few like good examples of this. Um, so once, once you do this enough, you can, can start to see what resembles what in the field so like this from above this is our track and this is that little lake i said that we got some water at here's charlie refilling his water filter there um but on this map like you know we're looking at it from way above but it just looks like kind of a little mellow rock field and then you can see you know like these rocks are like a couple feet big like they're they're pretty big um and as a result that section was pretty slow going maybe slower than we thought um similarly this is that same ridge that i was showing you guys this is actually the southeast ridge um but so that's sort of our route in blue um and you might look at this uh and be like oh yeah we can just kind of walk up that and like actually it's really steep um this wasn't it's not terribly exposed or anything it's just a little gully um but you know sort of remember for next time when it looks like this on a map you kind of have to climb um and then this is that ridge that i was pointing out that's like that we looked at with the slope angle um, and looked kind of good to a certain point and then it looked short of steep. But a lot of people, maybe when you're looking at it, we're like, oh, it doesn't look that bad. It looks flat. And then over here, you're like, whoa, that's like a 600 foot rock pillar. Um, so making those assessments after the fact will just make you more precise in the future. Toby, thanks for sharing all that. And I, I think really like, you know, being out in the mountains is a lifelong pursuit. So like, I, I think that the reflection is a really important aspect of that, whether that be your gear getting dialed or your mapping um, or just how you move through the mountains, um, taking a moment to reflect and, and to work on your team dynamics with the people you do these things with is always a good practice, whether that's trail or snow. Um, so thanks for sharing all that. That was pretty incredible. And that looked like a wild time up there. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> um, well, cool. Um, so if you haven't signed up for Onyx Backcountry yet, um, and we did a good job talking about it, here's a 30% off code um, that will save you 30% off Onyx Backcountry Premium or Elite. Um, and then this code um, also has a 14-day trial on here as well. Um, so if you follow that, you'll be able to, to try it out. Um, and then next one. Um, and sweet. Thanks for everyone for attending. We're giving away five Onyx Backcountry hats. Um, so I will put that link in the chat here right now. Um, so if you fill out this form, we're going to pick five winners. That'll get a hat. Um, and then we can go from there. And I think we have a little bit of time for Q&A still. Um, so you guys had been firing off so many questions during the, uh, the class here. Uh, thank you so much to our CX team, Eli and Grace, for just hammering away at all these questions. Um, but... There are some more I'm sure that are left unturned. So I'm gonna look through some of these and just see if we can get through them. Um, so cool, yeah, We this one kind of was already brought up, but um, can someone else follow you using the Onyx app um, as in watch your progress while you're out? Um, the best bet with that is to send somebody your route plan 
who's out of service before, but they cannot live stream your location. Um, so yeah, importing files from other um, other sources into Onyx, we kind of went over that a little bit, um, but yeah, we you can import pretty much a GPX file from anywhere you um, can find, um, either GPX or KML. Um, from your Caltopas, your Stravas, your um, random blogs, um, your summit posts, your Colorado 14ers initiatives, or your Colorado or 14ers.com um, is another great site for that. So yeah, we've made it easy to not only import lines from other places, but also to share them um, through that GPX filing that we shared with earlier. Um, I see a question about um, can these on one, one other comment on um, the GPX stuff too is just I know we only talked about it on web. Um, but same functionality on your mobile device, which is cool. Not all apps um, do that. And it's pretty handy. I know like products I've used before, you have to, I'm like, oh, I'm on my phone. I have to go to my computer, do this. And I'm like heading out to do something. I do it on my laptop. We can just like, you can just go online or your buddy can text you a GPS and boom, pop it right in the app, which is super handy. Um, and same workflow as we discussed. Yeah. And one of the coolest things I was actually doing this weekend at the rut when I was working at the booth Um and this kind of ties back to the question we just got about syncing with Garmin's. Um, you can export GPX files from your device and then um, on your mobile device and then airdrop them to people. So I was actually doing this at the booth. I was helping people get um, the race course set up on their Garmin watches and I would click a track, I would hit export, I would send it over to um, over to their mobile device and, um, and then they were able to import it into Garmin's proprietary software so they could get it on their wrist. Um, and and that's just our goal is just making this stuff as easy as we can to share. Um, do you think I should show that? that would people be interested in that? Sweet. I will, uh, I'm gonna do that real quick because I think it's cool and it's something we um, don't talk about quite yeah. enough. Um, so let's say I wanna share with a friend exactly like what I wanna do. This can also showcase Wrap Builder on mobile. So this would be a good opportunity. So in this bottom corner right here, we have tools. If you click that, it'll open up the tools. Those are the same ones we're familiar with from our web map experience. And we're going to build a route. So 18 Road is this great mountain bike zone where um, you're kind of riding up against, oh, I'm facing the wrong way, riding up against these mountains. And you just get to pedal up the road or get a shuttle and then just drop back to your car. So I'm going to look at, um, I like Joe's Ridge or Zippity. Yeah, Zippity. So let's say I'm just trying to plan it out from this campsite up here. I start clicking on the trail networks. It starts snapping to the trail. Look how great that is. Oh, wow. It even did that corner really well. <laughs> and it's great just doing this in 3D too. Um, and then it connects over here. And then it sinks in this parking lot. This is where people generally meet for a shuttle. So I'll save that one. And now that it's here, um, I can either hit this share button right here. And that would send that link. Um, and then the way to back into it a little bit from, um, from the GPX standpoint would be to my content one more time, my content. I'll do this a different way. Um, I'm going to do it easier because it's easier to select. So hit select right here. Um, it's this button right here. And then I can actually like just go back to the trail. What color did I make this thing black? Okay. And then I actually just clicked on this trail. It says one item selected, right? And then it shows in all of my stuff. Oh my gosh that this is, this is the route that is selected and it'll be shared. And then down here, there's your list of things you can do. So you can either share it, that'll do the link file. You can add it to a folder. You can hide it so you don't see it on a map or you can hit this export button, right? When you hit export, it gives you a couple options. You can text that GPX file to your friend. You can airdrop it. Um, you can send it via Facebook Messenger or Slack or email or whatever else you wanna do. And that'll physically send the file out to them via a mobile device. So that was that. <laughs> Easy as that, right? Cool. Sweet. Um, and then let's see, is there any other great one? So we had a question about um, markups and privacy. So Onyx Backcountry and Onyx in general, um, we value your privacy a lot. Um, we don't do any heat mapping. We don't publicly share waypoints. Um, we don't um, you know, share routes at all. So at this moment, like, you know, the routes that you build, the content that you create, everything like that remains yours. And you can see a reflection of how we kind of take that privacy seriously when Kobe shared me those files and it's it's view only, not edit. 
So that's like another point of just like, you know, your content is yours um, and we want to keep it that way. Um, yeah, no, like employees can also, like we cannot see any of that. It, like the data structure is not such that we can even see any of that um, information within individual accounts. Your secrets are safe with us. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I'm trying to see is if, if there's any other questions that need to be answered. I think we're getting pretty good. Um, I know there was a lot of information in there. Um, this will be recorded on YouTube and also our CX team is always so excited to chat with you. So reach out to support if you have any other questions that you'd like to get into. Um, but on that note, we've, we've been taking up a lot of your nights. Um, so I think we're going to wrap this up and, um, and go from here, but Thank you everyone to att for attending today. Kobe, thank you so much for sharing that inc incredible route with us. Um, and thanks everyone for joining. We'll catch you next time. We're doing these monthly um, and we are looking forward to going deeper. So thanks for everyone for joining. Thanks, All right. Guys. Take it easy. We'll see you soon. Bye.